Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for joining the Bible class of the Church of Jesus Christ. We honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor our pastor, Bishop John T. Leslie Jr. and Lady Louise Leslie. Our assistant pastor, District Elder Robert Taylor and Sister Melinda Taylor. Our pastoral assistants, Evangelist Margaret Williams and Evangelist Doris Thompson. We'd like to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. And now we ask that you go ahead and share this stream. Share, like, comment, let's share, let's get the word out. Now, our, at this time, our pastor is going to come with the opening prayer, and then he will introduce our teacher, and then I'll come back with a few announcements, and then we'll hear back from Bishop Leslie for final remarks and benediction. Now, let's receive our pastor, Bishop Leslie. Praise the Lord, everyone. Certainly, we thank the Lord for uh, the opportunity he's given us again to study the word of God. Man shall not live by bread only but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let us pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, again, we're so glad for the gathering of thy people. Thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp to our feet, is a light to our pathway. Help us to esteem your word more highly than our necessary food. When the enemy comes against us like a flood, and we know he's coming, give us that stamina to lift up a standard against the enemy. My God, put him in this place in the name of Jesus. Help us to hold your word, my God, and hide your word in our hearts and so that we will not sin against thee. Bless our teacher, Lord. Give him exactly what we have need of and help us to hear so that our souls can live. We ask you to do this for us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And praise the Lord again. And certainly we thank the Lord for the opportunity is given us to study the word of God. Thank the Lord for our, our assistant pastor, District Elder Robert Taylor, which is, who is our teacher. And thank the Lord for what the Lord is giving him to give us. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let us open up our hearts and receive the word of God as it comes to us from District Elder Taylor. God bless you, District Elder. Help yourself. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Bishop. And praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we're so honored once again to be back in the house of worship. Amen. To study the word of God. And I just want to thank God for another day that he has blessed us. Uh, you know, what my scripture always says, you know, well, not my scripture alone, but all of our scriptures. <laughs> it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed and because his compassions fail not, but they're new every morning. Uh, great is his faithfulness and praise God for having uh, serving a faithful God. Amen. The God that he is, he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He'll be with you always, even to the end of the age, he said, because he's faithful. And I praise God because uh, nobody else is that faithful to any of us like God is. And we thank God for uh, Jesus Christ this afternoon, this evening. Amen. We do honor our, uh, our bishop and pastor this evening, Bishop John T. Lester Jr. Amen. Hallelujah. Lesson. We praise God for you. Amen. And all of the great people of God. Amen. That have tuned in this evening. And we praise God for each and every day. We want to, uh, I think we want to conclude uh, what we've been studying over the last, over the several weeks. And that is moving from fear to faith. Uh, if you remember, we started this out with our uh, original scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7, which uh, uh, informed us that for God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And because of that, uh, we have to understand and we have to pick God's mind and we have to seek God. Uh, when because there are all kinds of things in this world that will cause us to fear, uh, cause us to have phobias, cause us to be a frightened and afraid. Uh, but it, through it all, through it all, the Lord has put power on the inside of us. Look at this. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of spirit, spirit of love and of power and a look, a sound mind, a sound mind. He doesn't want us to be disturbed and perturbed in our minds, but he wants us, our minds to be sound and solid uh, so that we can think right and think straight. Uh, and so, but fear comes, fear comes and adversary, the adversary influences this. Uh, and sometimes he brings this, uh, fear comes, uh, to, to, to rattle our uh, spirituality, to, to rattle our fear, to rattle up the love that we have for God and, and the things that we're trying and attempting to do for God, the adversary, he sends fear and, uh, other kinds of fears and phobias come. 
and, and it shakes us up. Uh, but God did not give us that spirit. It didn't come from God. It came from the adversary. And sometimes, you know, sometimes <laughs> I, I remember my mother used to always tell us, he, she said, you ain't got to worry about the dead. Uh, she said, uh, the, the living, the living will, uh, will, will hurt you, but the dead will make you, look at this, the dead will make you hurt yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, uh, you know, uh, I, I think about that sometime and I think, I think about, uh, you know, we used to live down in a hollow. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what a hollow is, but we used to live down in a hollow and in the summertime, uh, going down, going down that hill, going down in that hollow. Uh, you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. It was so dark, but you better knew where you, you better know where you were going. And sometimes uh, some of our friends, you know, would, would be hiding down in the cut. And I tell you, sometimes they have scared the daylights out of us at times, but, uh, but, but there are different kinds. There are different kinds of fears uh, that come our way, but God has not given us that spirit of fear, but a power love and a sound mind. I want to drive that in your, in, in your mind. He's given us the power of love, given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so with that said, uh, let's go back to where we left off last week. And that was, uh, I believe it was back in the book of, Je yeah, the book of Genesis, or the, I'm sorry, the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number five and six, uh, we learned there that God, uh, throughout his dealing with Israel, <clears throat> throughout his dealing with Israel, all God wanted them to do was to, for them to fear him. Uh, remember, God said, I'm going to give you, I've given you a land, given you a uh, land that you didn't, uh, you didn't, uh, you didn't build houses on. Uh, you didn't plant the vineyards and the olive yards. I'm sending you to a place uh, which flows with milk and honey, very fertile land, very uh, uh, fertile crescent uh, type area where God uh, was going to send them to that Canaan land. And, and God, God wanted them, they said, look, when you get over there, said, don't forget, don't forget me. Uh, and, you know, and many times, many times, sometimes, sometimes God does things for us and we forget God. We forget, we forget the vow that we made to God. We forget that we told him that, Lord, if you do this for us, I'm going to do this for you. Uh, and we made these covenants. We made these, uh, uh, these, these, these covenants with God. Uh, if you do this, then I'll do this. Uh, and, you know, God is expecting us to hold up to covenant hold up to the vow that we made to him uh he's not letting that go uh but he gives he gives us space he gives us time uh and through all of this uh he it is his hope that we would get ourselves together and come to the realization that look god is awesome you know i i i, I can't go i can't go back on my word on god because he's been too good to me and so God wants us, yes, he wanted Israel, he wants us to fear him, having that reverential type of fear. Uh, this is the kind of fear signifies first the caution and then reverence, reverence. Now, keep in mind, though, uh, there's a fear that comes from God that will scare us, that will scare us. You know, uh, be, behold, you know, uh, God is also, he's a consuming fire. And so we have to keep these things in mind. You know, yes, he's love, but he's also a consuming fire. And we have to keep these things in mind as we continually serve him from day to day. Uh, we, we can't let our guards down. We got to be, uh, we got to be proactive in serving God. Uh, apprehension, but especially holy fear, as, uh, as the card reads, uh, that mingled fear and love, which combined constitute the piety of man toward God. And so both apprehension and holy fear mingled, uh, that, that mingled fear and love, which combined, it constitutes the piety or the worship or the reverence of man toward God. Uh, and God wants us to reverence him, fear him. He wants us to serve him, worship him. Uh, he wants us to honor him uh, for who he is because he's a great God. Uh, it is he who had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. 
And so it says, <laughs> since God made us, he has, he's, he's, he's also keeping us and he's also providing for us. And at the same time, he's loving us and showing us grace and mercy toward us. He's doing all of this. And yet sometimes God does these things for us and gives us everything that we don't deserve. And yet we still don't hold up to the agreement that we made with God. And so God wants us to hold up to that agreement and fear him as never before, because the times are getting short. The time for his coming, the time for Jesus coming back for the church is getting shorter and shorter day by day. And we want to be ready and we want to we want to be so doing for God. Uh, occupying till he come uh, so that when he comes, uh, he won't find us and catch us with our work undone. And so uh, God, God, uh, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number five, uh, and, no, in that letter, in that letter of uh, chapter there, if you will look and turn with me, uh, look at what God says to Israel. He says to Moses to remind Israel of these things that I want them to fear me and keep my commandments. Uh, and look at this verse number. Uh, let's see. Let's go to verse number 20. I believe it's verse number 29. Yes, verse number 29. Deuteronomy chapter number five and verse number 29. Look at what it says. It says, oh, that there were such an heart in them in the children of Israel, that they would fear me and keep all of my commandments always, not just sometimes. You know, we just can't serve God when we want to serve him, but God wants us to serve him wholeheartedly all the time. We should always keep God on our mind. We should always be aware of circumstances and situations and be aware of our surroundings. Uh, we, it's always incumbent for us to be sober and be vigilant uh, because the adversary, the devil, is going to and fro uh, and he'll throw something up and throw a smoke screen up and make something look good and, and make us and cause us to forget about uh, us serving God and we have to be aware of these things people of God uh, we can't let our guard down because uh, our guard is what our guards up is what's keeping us together our guards up is what's keeping us uh, sound and solid in God and our guards up is what's keeping us uh, in the will of God and keeping our ears tuned to the voice of God. And so he says, oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all of my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. And so it's just not for them alone, but it's for their posterity, it's for uh, their legacy, it's for their children, their children's children, and, the, uh, and every generation that follows them. Uh, there should be somebody in the next generation that would, that would lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, and so that the name of the Lord uh, can be carried on throughout generations and generations of people. Uh, there should be a legacy behind uh, our names and legacy behind our families. You know, I made mention, I believe it was Sunday in the message that, uh, that, that, uh, you know, some of us, uh, and, and I'm one of them, this is, I, I I'm a first generation apostolic. Uh, my predecessors, my parents, my and those and, and their parents, uh, they were Baptists. Uh, uh, and beyond that, I don't know what the great grandparents were, but uh, but I'm the first generation. My family and I, we're the first generation of apostolics. And so this is this is something that I'm proud of. Uh, not that everything was bad about the Baptists, but uh, they just didn't have. Uh, the things that we need in order to live righteously, godly, and soberly in this present world. Uh, I mean, things have picked up since, you know, back in the day, but, uh, but people of God, you, you have, we have an heritage that we need to be proud of, and we can only be proud of that heritage if we are adhering to and fearing the God of our salvation. And so we can never forget that, but God wanted Israel. He says, look, uh, I wish, God says, I wish they had a heart in them that would fear me. I wish they did. Uh, but look at what the scripture says. Verse number 30, go say to them, go get you into your tents again. But as for thee, 
Stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. You see what he's telling Moses? Remember, the book of Deuteronomy is the law repeated, okay? The book of Deuteronomy is the law repeated. He, Moses is given the law the second time to the second generation of the Israelites that came out of Egypt. Remember that first generation, their carcasses fell in the wilderness because of their disobedience. Uh, chapter 10 of uh, 1 Corinthians, because of their murmuring and their complaining and their usurping, uh, their, their attempt to usurp the power from Moses and Aaron and, and Miriam. And so those uh, people of God, that first generation of Israel, their carcasses died in the wilderness, fell in the wilderness, except for, except for Joshua and Caleb. They were the only two above the age of 20 who's, who, who had a heart of God, uh, who came back with a good report, <clears throat> and, and they never complained, they never murmured, uh, but they assured the people and told Moses that, look, we are well able. Lord, have mercy. We are well able. And so uh, it was those two uh, whose, whose carcasses did not fall in the wilderness. They lived to see and to inherit the land which Moses had promised them, well, really what God had promised them through the man Moses. And so uh, here they are. Here they are. Uh, say, Moses, I want you to teach them again, teach them, teach this next generation all the things that I'm expecting of them, because if they do according to what you tell them and command them, then they're going to live and they're going to love me, they're going to worship me, they're going to reverence me for the rest of the days of their life. Hallelujah. And so there's no letting up, there's no quitting, there should be no quitting. But we should always be on cue and be on point in serving God. Always. We can't give up. We can't let down. We can't compromise. But we should always be on point in serving the God of our salvation. Verse number 31, uh, verse number 32 says, But uh, ye shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God had commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God had commanded you that you may live and that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days. Look at this. Look at what God has given them. Prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Now, I know some of you might say, well, you know, uh, these commandments were for Israel, you know, and true. It, they are there for Israel. Uh, but aren't we spiritual Israel? Uh, isn't all scripture inspired by God and given to us uh, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man and woman of God may be thoroughly furnished and uh, unto all good works? Can we apply this to our lives also? I tell you, yeah, we can. We can. Uh, and and is, if it was good for Israel, it's good for us too. <laughs> You understand? If it's good for Israel, it's good for us too. Keep in mind, last week we turned to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse number 12, I believe it is. What did Paul tell them? Let's turn there. Philippians, chapter number 2, and verse number 12. Look at what the Bible says. Philippians, chapter number 2. And verse number 12, look at what the scripture says. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Say, so you, do, you do pretty good when, when you're around the saints. You do pretty good when you're around pastor. You do pretty good as long as uh, when people are looking at you. You do pretty good in serving the Lord. But what about when you're absent from those people? What about when you're alone in your house, out in the street, uh, on your job? Are you, are you still serving God? Are you still, is there a certain fear in you 
to hold fast to the, to the word of God? Are you still serving God when nobody's looking? Because if you're not, you're only fooling yourself. And it's a terrible thing to fool yourself. And so whether somebody's looking or not, and Paul is trying to drive this into the minds of the Philippians. He says, uh, look, he says, you do all right as far as uh, you're in the presence of the saints and in my presence, but, but in my absence, that's when you really ought to cut down and serve God. That's when you really ought to get down with the nitty gritty in serving God. In my absence, when nobody's looking, when nobody's around, when it's just you and God. My God, don't you know when it's just you and God, you can you can, you can can walk through the house or, or either walk through your neighborhood. Sometime I walk out on my, on my route, my God, while I'm delivering mail, I look up at the sky and I just give God some praise, Lord have mercy. You know, and, and, and I don't care, and you know what, I don't care who who knows that? Uh, who knows all of this? I don't care who's looking. My God, when you feel a praise come on, then God is expecting some praise out of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. But look at what that last clause of this scripture says, verse number 12. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out, reverencing God, and at the same time, fearing what can happen to you if you're not reverencing God. So work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Don't let up for a moment, because the moment you let up, the adversary will come in and try to take advantage of you. And so work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And this is the thing that he's driving out, driving in the minds and the hearts of the children of Israel. Work out your salvation. Uh, have, a, have, a, have a holy reverence. Have a holy awe for the God of your salvation because God is awesome. You know, Bishop Bell said God is the only one that we can attribute that word awesome to. And that's God. That is God. And so here, here, verse number uh, 33 once again. Uh, chapter five of Deuteronomy, verse number 33, look at what it says. You shall walk in all my way, all the ways which the Lord your God had commanded you that you may live and that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess, the land which you shall possess. God wanted them to prolong their days in the land that they were going over to possess. Lord, have mercy. Verse number one, chapter six. Let's read a little bit further. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. God is not playing. He is serious about his people being obedient to the word of God. And sometimes, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it, it, it's all right to say amen, but sometimes you got to say ouch. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, I repent. I haven't, I haven't done this. I haven't served you uh, the best I, that I could. I could have done a little bit more. I could have served a little bit better. And Lord, I got to repent because I haven't done this to the best of my ability. Oh, bless the name of God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. See, we can't serve God when we feel like it. We can't serve God uh, because things are convenient. We can't obey God just because, be, uh, well, this right here fits me. Then I, I'll do this, but the other part I'm not. You can't do, you can't choose, you can't choose what to, what to obey and what not to obey. If God said do it, then you got to do it. And this and not doing it ought to put some fear of God in your heart and in my heart. I'll be the first to admit, Lord, keep on working on me because I ain't there yet. I'm not there. Keep on working on me. And, but, and every time, every time the Lord show us something to, 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 to pick up on or, or, or to, to, to catch up with, then catch up with it. Put it on. Do it. 
If he's showing you something that you haven't been doing it, th then do it. He's not showing it just to be showing it. He's showing it because he wants you to be obedient to the word of God. And he wants you to serve him in the beauty of holiness, in the beauty of holiness. Verse number two, chapter six, verse number two, that thou mightest fear, here we go again, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thou, I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son, son, all the days of my life that they that thy days may be prolonged. And so God wants this thing to be passed down generationally, not just for not just for the present generation, but those generations that are coming after us. You understand? He wants he wants those generations coming after us to know this and to fear him. If they want to live long upon the earth, if they if they want their days prolonged upon the earth, then God wants these generations that come after the present generation to do the same thing that the present generation are doing. But the present generation has to make sure that they're doing all that they're supposed to be doing in serving God. Judges 2 and 10, there arose another generation that knew not the Lord, nor his works. Another generation that knew not the Lord. What was it that they didn't know? What was it that they weren't taught? Or were they taught and they just did not pay attention? They had in their minds that we're not going to do this. It's almost, it kind of reminds me of Rehoboam. When Rehoboam came to power after, her, after his father Solomon, uh, you remember what his, uh, his peers told him? He says, look, he says, uh, he says, let your little finger, uh, and I'm just paraphrasing, let, let your little finger be as potent or more powerful than, 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 than Solomon's, or whatever it was, his hand or his, or, or, or his loin, his thigh, uh, but let your little finger be more powerful than that. And instead of Rehoboam taking the advice of the elders that lived with Solomon, he decided to go with his peers and take the advice of his peers. And because of that, it got him in trouble and caused him to lose, even though it was prophesied, caused him to lose 10 of the 12 tribes that was under his rule. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I tell you, you might be say, you might say, well, you know, I, I don't know. Holiness, holiness is tight. It might be tight, but it's right too. <laughs> I wouldn't have it no other way. I wouldn't have it no other way. I tell you, of all that we have experienced in life before holiness, I, I, I don't want anything. I don't want anything other than holiness. <laughs> Hallelujah! I tell you, I feel good in my soul. All right. Uh, so let's read a little bit further. Verse number three, once again, in chapter six of Deuteronomy says, uh, he, I'm sorry, verse number, uh, yeah, verse number three, hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that they, and that they, that you may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. And then verse number four is the Shema of Israel. Hear, O Israel, that the Lord your our God, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love him. And you know what? And having a reverence for God. If we really love God the way we say we love God, if we really fear him the way we say we fear him, if we really honor God and worship him and adore him the way we say we do, it's not, it shouldn't be just a song that we sing, but it should be a life that we live. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's important to know that these, this command means to us as believers, only as we fear the Lord, we will be delivered from the bondage of slavery and all abnormal fears. As long as we serve God, as long as we fear God. And it's important for us as children of God to know this. You understand? It's important for us to know this. 
And so uh, it is essential when you talk about the fear of the Lord, the fear of God, it's essential to fearing God is a recognition of his holiness. It's a recognition of his justice and his righteousness. And that's a counterpart to God's uh, love and his mercy. All of this, the fear of God, his holiness, his justice, his righteousness, they are counterparts of his love and his mercy. In other words, uh, to, to know him and understanding fully who he is. Such fear is based on the acknowledgement that God is a holy God whose very nature, whose very nature causes him to judge sin. And fearing God the way God wants us to fear him, it will keep us away from sin. You know, it, it is, it is, it is, <laughs> it's, it, it is something how we can, we can, we can dance and shout and speak in tongues one moment. And then the next moment, we can't even get along with our brothers and sisters. Yeah, at some point, at some point, at some point, when is somebody when is the, when is the one who is spiritual enough going to say to the other brother or the other sister, "Look, even though there's something between us, look, let's continue our fellowship. Let's continue the love that God wants between us." But if we fear God the way we should fear Him. We should have no problem loving our brother and our sister. And of, of, most of all, we should have no problem in loving God. And so this, is, this, 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 this kind of fear, this kind of fear draws us, should draw us to our knees. To fear the Lord is to regard him with holy awe and reverence and to honor God as God because of his great glory and his holiness, his majestic power. When we really, when we really sit down and meditate on who God is, it literally would blow our minds. If we would just sit down and just meditate, you know, take a moment to meditate. Get alone in, in a room. Go downstairs where there's nobody, no, no, no TV on and, and turn your phone off and just take the time out to just meditate on who God is. That, that, will, that blows the mind to know who he is and what he has done. His creation blows the mind. There are those who would, who would want you to think that all of this happened because of a Big Bang theory. But there was an intelligent mind that brought all of this together. And that intelligent mind was the God of glory. It might seem kind of, it might seem kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of hard comprehending that with, a, with our little finite minds. Because God is God is infinite. There is no beginning of Him. There is no ending of Him. He always had. You know, I, I I talk about the isness of God. He just is. God is just is. You can't date Him. You can't predate Him. Because he, eternity is in him. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know, who, who God, the universe, but the universe is in God. You understand? God, God is not in the universe. Yes, he's, he's, he's omnipresent, but he's not in the universe, but the universe 
is in God. And the universe encompasses everything from the stellar, the constellations, everything up in the heavenlies, everything that is, has been created, all of that is in God. And so God is just that awesome. And this awesome God took the time out to speak to man to tell us, look, all I want you to do is just serve me, worship me, honor me, reverence me, revere me. It's all I want you to do. And that's a deal to, to us, a deal that we didn't have, look, we didn't have to pay for it. We didn't have to wait for it to go on sale. We didn't, it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a discounted price but it's been paid for in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Israelites at Mount Sinai saw God manifest himself through the thunderings and the lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. And they trembled in fear and begged Moses to speak to us rather than God himself. We don't want God to talk to us. Moses, we want you to speak to us. The psalmist in Psalm 33, in his reflections as God as creator states explicitly that all the earth fear the Lord, that all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. <laughs> is God awesome or what? True fear of the Lord causes believers to place their faith and trust in him alone for salvation, for healing, for everything, for our help. He's our help and he is our shield. He is our buckler. He's our exceeding great reward. The fear of the Lord produces in God's people a confident hope and trust in him. That should be the product of the people of God fearing God. It produces in God's people a confident hope and trust in him. And so through all of this, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the fear of God involves recognizing that he is a God who is angry about sin and has the power to punish those who transgress his righteous laws, both in time, look at this, and in eternity. Nothing has gone unnoticed with, with God. I believe it's uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number 12, I believe it is, uh, because, uh, because uh, a, a sin has not, uh, there's no uh, speedy uh, judgment on it. Then the hearts of the son of man are bent on doing wrong continually. I'm going to paraphrase it. Just because God don't call the card when, you, when, you, when it happens don't mean that he's forgotten about it. But while he has not called the card, it gives us space and time to repent. Isn't that something? How many people have gone in eternity with unrepentant Hearts never did get these things straight. Time after time again, God warned them and wooed them. Almost begged them, beseeched them to get things straight. Because God is going to outlive us. And so 
he, he's going to punish those who transgress his righteous law, both in time and in eternity. Wow. And so what, what, what is it, what is it that is in us that figure that we can serve God whenever we want to? We can obey God, uh, obey the things of God, the things that we want to obey. What is it in us? What is it about us that, that gives us that kind of attitude, that kind of mindset? Let me ask you a question, and don't raise your hands by all means, but what were you thinking when God saved you? What were you thinking? Were you, were you thinking that, uh, did, did you want to be saved because uh, your buddies or your friends were being saved? Did you want to be saved because, oh, uh, you know, God saved them, and when the, when the anointing hit them, you know, they, they got to shout, they got to dance? What was your reason for, for, for God saving you? The reason why you wanted to be saved? If it was the right reason, then uh, the things that you have promised God since salvation, are you living up to those things? Because if you, if you really love God, if you, if you really love him the way you say you love him, if you really, if you really mean right the way you say you mean right, there's a certain fear that comes with your attitude in serving God. You won't, you, 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 you won't, you won't, <laughs> you won't do anything you want to do. When the word comes, uh, <laughs> I think about Evangelist Belton sometimes. She says, uh, anything that comes in contact with God's word either lives or dies. And that's really the truth. You understand? Anything that comes in contact with God's word. And that includes us as human beings. We can live by the word or we can die by the word. I believe we're living in a time, and we, we've all, well, let me say, we've always lived in a time that, that, that I'm getting ready to state after this statement. We've always lived in this kind of time, but uh, even more so now, and maybe that's the right word, even more so now. We're living in a time where uh, if we're going to be saved, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time to get it together. Now is the time to love God. Now is the time to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. Now is the time to serve God the way uh, God wants you to serve him. Now is the time. We can't wait till later. We can't wait till next week. We can't wait till tomorrow. But you got to start serving him right now. You got to have a made up mind. And you can't worry about what the next fellow or the next sister doing. You got to have a made up mind because you know something. <laughs> there, there are people depending on you. There are dependent people depending on me. And each and every one of you who are on this call tonight, who are on this uh, in this Bible class, there are people who are depending on you and me to stay saved, to serve God, because the choice that they might they make is dependent on whether or not you stay saved or not, whether, whether or not you're acting like a Christian or not. <laughs> and so it, it is here that, that God, God wants us to serve him uh, in, and with all that we have. Uh, you know, Proverbs 1 and 7 says that uh, the beginning of wisdom or the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord, but fools despise instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. 
the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, uh, his awesome power, the reverential fear of God, the fear of the reverence, all of God's power, his, his majesty, his holiness, uh, it should produce a holy fear of, of transgressing uh, his revealed will. And such reverence is essential to gaining a heart of wisdom. It should put a fear of a, a fear of us in him, a fear of him in us. That no, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing anything against that word. Only thing, only thing I can do with, with that word is obey it. I'm not going to transgress it. I'm not going to be, be, be disobedient toward it. I'm going to be obedient to the word of God, and I'm going to live up to what this word says. And I'm going to fear God with, with, with the holy fear. I'm going to fear him with all that's in me. And so this kind of fear counteracts to some degree. It counteracts the phobias and uh, the different fears that we have, whether they, it comes from, uh, whether it comes from the adversary, whether it comes from uh, people who have been influenced, whether it comes from uh, inanimate objects, you know, some, some, some of y'all watch horse, <laughs> some of y'all watch horror stories. Uh, I remember years ago, we, we watched uh, the Twilight Zone me and my uh, two brothers, and we would we would sit up on the couch with a blanket. Uh, and when when uh, when the monster came on the scene, we would cover our cover our faces up. You know, some of y'all know what I'm talking about because some of y'all did the same thing. Uh, but 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 we we you know it, it didn't stop us from watching it. But we didn't want to see that part though. So there are all kinds of things that will put fear in our hearts and cause us to fear, but God has not given that kind of spirit to us. But he's given us the spirit of power to counteract that spirit of fear, love to counteract that spirit of fear, a sound mind to counteract that spirit of fear. And the more Ecclesiastes chapter number 12. And you're familiar with uh, this particular verse. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes chapter number 12. And look at verse number. Uh, look, look, look at verse number. Uh, verse number 13. Verse number 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Fear God. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Let me read this from the Amplified Version. Verse number 13, it says and from the Amplified Version, when all has been heard, the end of the matter is fear God. Worship him with all field reverence knowing that he is almighty God and keep his commandments for this applies to every person and to cap it off verse number 14 for God will bring every act to judgment every hidden and secret thing whether it is good or evil for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it is it be good 
or whether it be evil. But this is the whole duty of man, and that is to fear God. This entire book of Ecclesiastes must be understood in the light of this concluding verse. Everything that has been said in this book of Ecclesiastes, this is the concluding verse. Solomon began with a cynical appraisal of life as vanity, emptiness, meaninglessness. But he, he ends it with serious counsel about where meaning can be found. And that is the fear of God, love for him and his word, and obedience to his commandments. It will bring purpose and satisfaction that cannot be found any other way. Isn't that something? So out of all of the things that cause us to fear in this life, or that will bring fear into our hearts, the one that we should be fearing is God, and not just fearing in the, in, in the area of reverencing him, but fe fear what can happen if we don't be obedient to his word. That's a scary thought. And God is the judge. He's the counsel. He's the prosecutor. He's the jury. And he says he's going to bring everything, every work into judgment. He's going to hold us. <laughs> he's going to hold us in court. And he, and he has witnesses. He are called the heavens to witness. And so he has everything in his, in his control. There's nothing that he needs outside of himself. I almost feel like the angels, whoever created us, ought to be worshiped. So let nothing stop us from fearing God. With all these other things coming upon us like a flood, let us hold fast to the God that saved us, the God of our salvation. And this kind of fear, friend of mine, will move us from fear to faith. It will produce a faith in us no doubt that we've never had before. The more we serve God, the more we reverence God. It will produce a quality of faith in us that we, that we really long for. And so with that said, I'm going to end right there. Are there any questions before we turn this over? Any questions? If not, stay tuned for uh, uh, next week. We're starting, starting a new series next week, I think, is uh, one that uh, you're, you're going to enjoy and because I, I, I'm enjoying it already. Um, but stay, stay tuned next week. Um, and, you know, Bible class is meant to be uh, interactive. <laughs> you understand? It's meant, it's meant to be interactive. Um, those of you who may have comments or questions or just might want to interject something, feel free to do so. I think Bible class should be interactive. But nonetheless, though, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much once again for our time spent together this evening. And Lord, as always, we ask, oh God, that you would bless, oh God, those who are looking this way for prayer, those, oh God, who are standing in need of something, Lord, from you. Oh, God, we pray, oh, God, that you would supply their every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, bless us now and cause all of us to be blessed of thee. And we'll thank you for it. We will give your name the praise. And, Lord, as you move us from fear to faith, oh, God, help us to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know 
that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Bless us now, Lord. We'll be blessed of thee. We we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone says, amen, amen, and amen. Dr. Phil. <clears throat> All right, Bishop. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise God for the powerful teaching tonight uh, from our assistant pastor, District Elder Taylor. My God, it's, it's, it's really powerful. And I thank the Lord for uh, everyone that's enjoying the word of God. God's word is so precious and it takes time to uh, hear God's word and it takes time to uh, let God's word drop into the heart. Praise him. When you hear the word, it goes through your ears first, but then after it gets through the ears, then when you kick in faith, then that word sinks down in the city of your soul. And that's where, when it sinks down in the city of your soul, that's where you use it. My God, when the enemy comes against you like a flood, that word that's in the city of your soul, you use it to let that devil know, get behind me, Satan. Because all of us have that same demon, that same adversary. And that's why we need, need to get all the word that we can so that when the enemy comes, and he's coming, he's coming. He got us on his hit list. Praise him. We can lift up a standard against uh, the enemy. Thank you so much, this together, Taylor, for a great teaching tonight. Praise the Lord. And certainly uh, the Lord is good to his people. Uh, you know, we have technology and we you can tell by how many people are present. And if I'm looking at this uh, indication right, praise the Lord, there's about 45 souls uh, on the, uh, in the system tonight. Praise him. And that's a real good number. And we thank the Lord for our system pastor that's given us great word. And we thank the Lord for you that are coming out to hear. Uh, the word of God. God's word is our food for our souls. And we certainly do thank the Lord for the opportunities giving us uh, to be in the presence of his word. Thank you so much for your presence. Lord, I think that's all I want to say. Praise him. Let us look to the Lord and be dismissed. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, again, we're so glad for your word. And help us esteem your word more highly than our necessary food. And also help us, Lord, to use that word when the enemy comes against us like a flood. We can use the word against the enemy, put him behind us, put him under our feet. My God, because greater is he that's in us. Than that. That's the power of the Holy Ghost, that he that's in the world, and that is the devil. And certainly we thank you for this gathering of your people. Bless us and let us be blessed of you. That was the highest word in our hearts. So when the enemy comes against us for real, like a flood, we can lift the word up against the enemy. Bless us and let us be blessed of thee. We ask you to do this for us in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And peace be unto the saints. Peace be multiplied.